afternoon, everyone. I'm super excited today to be here in this uh, uh, session. One of my favorite, actually. I'm so pleased to have uh, uh, the time of Lord with us, Les Watson. I'm so you know honored to have you. Can't wait to learn more about time management and how to deal with all this sort of stuff to reduce anxiety. And uh, we have a co-host here, Danny and Giselle. Hello. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome back to another enlightening episode of Conversations with G&G. &G. Now today we're thrilled to have our very special guest, Les Watson, joining us. Les is renowned for his passion and his expertise in time management and productivity, earning him the nickname of the Time Lord. He's got such extensive experience spanning across Australia and Southeast Asia. Les has delivered dynamic training programs to major corporations, small businesses, and also individuals. Drawing from over 35 years of experience as a trainer, speaker, and a facilitator in self-management, motivation, and communication, Les brings a wealth of knowledge and skill to the table. Uh, also, as the author of Get Back an Hour in Every Day, Les offers some practical insights into reclaiming lost time and boosting productivity. Additionally, he facilitates the acclaimed Creating Success Coaching Program, which has garnered praise for its effectiveness in helping individuals achieve their goals. So join us today as we delve into the world of time management and productivity with Les and discover actionable strategies to optimise your daily routine and achieve success. Stay tuned for an engaging conversation that's sure to inspire and motivate. Great to have you with us, Les. To be here. What a great introduction. <laughs> oh, I'm like, oh, fantastic. No, How long is this thing? <laughs> a lot it's happening so there, good. Les. <laughs> so good, Les. It's yes. a long bio, really, isn't it? <laughs> it's done so much. Absolutely. Fantastic. So it's great to have you here. I want an hour back. Tell us, you need to tell us how we can get an hour back in our day. And, you know, this, what we're here today is really to focus on caregivers, mm. um, family members. And one of the key things, I guess, is that when things are going wrong, challenging situations, something gets added onto your plate, like maybe a loved one is unwell, how do you manage that and fit that into your already busy schedule? It's a great question. It's a great question. There's a couple of basics that are needed in regards to time. And as we were talking previously, the thing around time is we're all under, it's constraint. There's 24 hours, that's it. And my time is the same as your time is the same as the President of the United States, Mother Teresa, Gandhi, my even God, Jesus. Yeah. was like it, 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 sits, it sits under that thing of we have a time constraint of 24 hours. So therefore... You see some people able to work it really easy and others struggle with it. And I believe there's some very key basics that you can put into your day to really help you, particularly in the areas of caring for people, because not only you're trying to look after yourself, but you've got someone you're trying to look after as well. So I suppose the, the big thing for me is just getting clarity and Danny and I are, are good mates and friends and we've, we've done this a number of times where you you download everything that's going on in your head down onto paper. Mm. And I only did one of these the other day with a corp, in a corporate setting and people are saying, this is so good, just getting everything out of your head down onto paper because we hold on to so many things in our head. I was like, I'll go to this and this, 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 this. And unless they're written down, they sit on your shoulder and it's like, Giovanni, how about this? Giovanni, how about this? Giovanni? Come on, Gio, Gio, Gio. Hello, hello, hello. What about me? What about me? Now, after after a while, you go, I'm sick of this thing on my shoulder. And you don't even worry about it anymore. It goes numb. But it mm. hasn't gone away. Mm. It's still there. Mm. That thing persists even though you don't notice it anymore. And then it piles on another one and mm. another one and another one and another one. So it rocks to the back. Very much so. Mm. And you go, when are you going to let that go? What do you mean? Oh, I've had this backpack forever. Wow. So every now and then you need to unpack the, the backpack. And the way I call it is download everything out of your head down onto paper. It's what's a data dump or a mind sweep and mm. get it all out. And I have a, a trigger list and people can hit me up for the trigger list, maybe mm. for that. And I'll put that in the, 
in the show notes, uh, or maybe yeah, in, in, in the newsletter, whatever it might be, and yeah. people can get <clears throat> that. So by mm. by taking a key word, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for example, we've mm-hmm. all done this, mm-hmm. garage. Garage mm-hmm. is a key word. I'll just go and do the garage. Mm-hmm. And you open the door and you go, yeah, nah. <laughs> Why? Because you think it's just one thing, garage, yeah. and yet yeah. the back end is, oh, I've got this, 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 and it's 40 or 50 my wife would say a hundred <laughs> things to do. And it's like, and, oh, it's all too much. And what yeah. it does, it creates clutter in your mind that sort of holds you back from or, or sips your energy out of it. Yeah. What about me? What about me? What yeah, about yeah, me? What about you, me? It, but it's not one thing. Yeah. It's a hundred. It's 150 things that sit on yeah. your shoulder to go, that, hello, are you sure you've done me? Are you sure you've handled me? Have you wrapped that up? And there's a cycle of productivity. Mm, mm. Having an idea is one thing. Mm. Then starting it, mm. continuing it, finishing it, and acknowledging it. If you don't acknowledge things, it just goes around the loop of start, continue, finish, start, continue, finish, start, continue, finish. And I'm sure there are people listening, watching this, that kind of go, oh, I'm mm. on that treadmill. I am yeah. so on that treadmill. And that creates stress and anxiety. How much? So much stress. Yep. Yeah. Because I don't – it's like – I just want to get off. I just want to get some peace. I just want to get some calm in my life. So therefore, so by writing it down, down so you suggest writing physically with the pen or even on a computer. Is there any any difference? Yes, the huge difference. Right. The the kinesthetic value, the the hands on thing of having a pen and Mm. doing it. There's a whole lot of difference. Even down to you'll Mm -hmm. love this. One of the, I think it was Monash, his MBA, actually said, no more laptops, no more tablets, no more wow. iPads. You need to write your notes because wow. of the cognitive difference yeah. of writing it <coughs> pen Fantastic. to paper yeah. is yeah, huge. So, good. so I say to people, yeah. take the trigger list and just word for word, what is it triggering inside of you? So for me, garage, mm-hmm. for example, if I said the word garage, there are four things. Mm-hmm. My wife, Mary, would say there's a hundred, but the, she's not here, so it's just four. They are, I bought two shelves and only built one. So I build the second shelf. Uh, there's some audio gear I need to pack away. There's some boxes I, I need and I need to sweep. So there's four things. So I wouldn't write down garage, I'd write down the four actions. Mm, so mm. very specific. Yeah. Be specific in what you want to achieve and yeah. what you want to get through. Yep. Mm. Yep. So that thing of... Doing a data dump, getting it out of your head, down onto paper, and you can do it on a regular basis. It mm. doesn't need to just be something you do once. You can do it every week. You can do it every month. I have people come back to me every year to go, just that exercise is worth the price of entry just to come and do that exercise. Absolutely. And we invited you in, uh, it was a couple of years ago when yep. you came to our office and, and ran that workshop with all our team. And I am still remember that exercise. It was just so good you know, to do that mental you know, you create a mental space to be more effective yeah. yep. and, and not to worry about because you can't hold so mm-hmm. many thoughts in your mind. And once you write it down, it's like you crystallize them and then you have them in front of you and you say, oh, well, this is not as bad as I thought it is. And then it's there and you know that, you know, you got to deal with that. Yeah. And it's two sides to the coin. Some people, once they get it out of their head onto paper, it's reams, it's pages and pages and pages. And the first comment that they say is, uh, they get overwhelmed. By I'm this overwhelmed stuff. with this stuff. It's like, yeah. well, hold on a tick. Yeah. It was still there. Mm. Yeah. It, 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 I didn't create that. It was mm. actually sitting on your shoulder yeah. going, uh, 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 what about me? What about me? What about me? All we've done is taken it from the back to the front, put it on the paper, and you go, wow, mm. how about that? And there are obviously mm. the other side of people go, woohoo, I now know what to do. Mm. Yeah. And you can have both going at the same time. And I'm guessing at some point when you've got your list down, you can prioritise much easier. When you see it in front of you, you can be like, well, that's actually, I'm going to hand this over to someone else to do. Or I can, can, um, this is not important, so I'll cross it off the list. I'm not going to do it. I'll focus on these ones because they're more important. Like I guess that's another big advantage of doing that. Absolutely huge. Yeah, just just by ticking it off or cross it off, it's just like, uh, I feel better. Then it's out. I've even yeah. been known, because I love that process of the tick off. Mm. I love I've it. I've got an app yeah. now that I use. <clears throat> like I do yeah. my list manually yep. and I put it into monday.com. Yep. Shameless plug, but no sponsorship. <laughs> and um, and it's so great because if you don't get to something, you can reprioritize it, you can drag it up the list and change the days. You yep. can 
do all of that. Um, but that whole thing, and then sometimes I'll have done something that day and I'll go, oh, I did this and this, so I'll add it to the list just so I can check it off. Yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And it's yeah. and it is that part inside that goes, hello, what about me? Do I get any knowledge for doing that work? And <laughs> yeah. if you go through your day and you haven't got a list, you get to the end and you go, what did I do today? What did I do? What did I do? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm like, I don't feel like I've achieved anything. But if you've written it down or in an app, and I'll talk about that in a minute, you've got a record of, gee, I got some stuff done today. Mm. And it doesn't matter what they are. And I'll, I'll talk about it. So let me just take one step back. Once you get it out of your head, down onto paper, then you kind of go, okay, two things, categorise and contextualise. Categorise is what does, how long is this going to take? So there's some things on your list, Giselle, you need to let go of. Mm. You just need to delete them. Mm-hmm. It's been on your list for 10 years, heart. And it's time to let it go. But I don't want to. I don't really like that thing. But you haven't done anything with it <laughs> for 10 years. Yeah. yeah, but, oh, I suppose you're right. Yeah, okay. So based on that, be honest with the process and go, mm. nah, I'm ticking that one off. That's going, done. Yep. And if it comes back, it comes back. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yep. Not a problem. That's number one. Mm. Then two-minute jobs. We love mm. two-minute jobs. Why? Because they just take under two minutes. It's like I can move that, I can shift that, I can handle a lot of things in two minutes. So what are the two-minute jobs? Mm-hmm. Delete, two-minute jobs, single action items. Mm-hmm. Longer than two minutes, not a project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're single. And I, I use the library book. And does mm. that date me? Yes, it does. But I love a good library. I love a good book. So therefore, grab the book, stick it in the car, drive to the library, put it through the slot, that task of returning a library book is singular of nature. It's not a project and it's longer than two minutes. Mm. So given that, you've got delete, two minutes, singles and projects. Garage, classic example, Mm -hmm. where it's more than one action Mm -hmm. to handle the garage. It's a project and you you treat it as a project with actions, deadlines. Yep, all of those sort of things, including... If you ever get stuck in a project, two questions. First question, what's the what are we trying to achieve here? What yeah. does done look like? Yeah, yeah. What are we why are we here? Yeah. Why are we here? Oh, I want to get this done. Fabulous. At least we know what we're doing. And then what's the single next action item? Because it's always the next thing to do. Mm-hmm. Always. Mm-hmm. Always an opportunity to go, oh, I could do this, therefore that's the single next action. Mm-hmm. And you've so got good. something to do. So that, and there's one other, and that is those things that are non-business critical for the future. Like I want to go to Japan or I want to mm. go to America mm-hmm. or I want to put a patio on the deck yep. or a deck on the back of the house. So that opportunity to do, is it this week? No. Mm-hmm. Is it this month? Probably not. This year? No. Nah. So I'm going to put it on a separate list for planning mm-hmm. for next year or the year after. Mm-hmm. So as I... It's not in here. It's on a list and I can get to it later on. Mm. So what you're looking at as a carer, mm-hmm. is to really take those things that are on your shoulder, mm-hmm. are really sitting on your shoulder going, I've got stuff that I need to handle. What are they? Yep. Mm-hmm. What are the things you've had an idea of and mm-hmm. not started? Mm-hmm. Started, not continued. Continue, not finished, and finish and not gone. Well done, good and faithful mm-hmm. servant. You've done really well with that. Tick that off, move on. Yep. So those mm-hmm. things are really important to be able to get it out of your head, down onto paper, put it into a... a Category, then context. So where are you doing that task? Is it at home? Mm. Is it at work? Mm. Is it with the person you're caring with? Is it with the professionals? Mm -hmm. Because rather than have it in your head, I've got a a question for the doctor. So don't keep it in your head. Right on the list, when I get to the doctor, I Mm. will ask that question. Ah, So good. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. So it really is a thing of... Don't keep it in your head. The head's a great place Mm -hmm. to have an idea, not a good place to store it. I'll say that one again. Head, great place to have an idea, not a good place to store it. Yep. And what's a good place to store it? On paper. Paper. Yeah. Get it out. (laughs) Download it. And I call it a trusted system. Mm -hmm. And we've talked a lot about trusted system, and and I've said it before with you guys. It's where is a system that you have, once it's out of your head, down somewhere, it will get done. Mm-hmm. That you trust <clears throat> that it will get done. Mm-hmm. What is that thing? 
And I, I remember mm. an executive I was working with, and he went, oh, I know exactly what you mean, come with me. And he took me out of the training room to his office, and he went, uh, and there's a diary, and there's a notebook, and there's a pad, and there's another notebook, <laughs> and if I don't find a notebook, I'll just grab another notebook. <laughs> no wonder I'm so confused. So no. this is trusted system. What's no. your trusted system? As a carer, do you have a single source of truth that you go to every day as you work with who you're working with mm -hmm. so that it's in one place as opposed to, I'm sorry, Danny, uh, it's around here somewhere. Sorry, Giovanni, mm. I can't find it. I put it down somewhere and I've lost it. Mm -hmm. oh, so you need yes. a trusted system. <clears throat> like yeah. a diary or some sort of organising pad or some, some You got sort. it. Yeah, you got yeah. it. And All it off to office works, I think. <laughs> So many people say that to me. I'm, I'm off to office works. I'm going to go and get something. And I have one. I have one that is paper-based. And it works for me because I'm old school. And we we're talking about monday.com. Mm. That's another one. Outlook is another one. Yeah. Um, you've got Evernote. You've got yeah. OneNote. And you've got, you, you've got ones you can actually, yeah. like, collaborate. So if you, you're a carer and you need to divide up responsibilities, oh, other families. people can be on an app. And you can delegate tasks or they can be notified when there's appointments and things like that. But yes. Liz, I remember when I was really busy a few years ago with work and I was doing radio and, of course, you would come in every week for the segments and then we're mates, so, you know, we'd catch up. And I was really stressed because I was caring for, mm. you know, three of my kids who had, you know, different needs at the time mm. medically and some other stuff feeling really overwhelmed and, and I was always late. And to the point that I went into a shop one day and I saw this watch and it had all the numbers at the bottom just jumbled up and it said on the watch face at the top, whatever, I'm late anyway. <laughs> right? Mm. And that was this pattern. And I'm like, I can't buy that watch because it'll reinforce that I'm yes. late all the time. But I loved it. <laughs> and I kept it in my mind. I thought, how about I turn over a new leaf and I get the watch to remind me that not, to be late. not to be late because then I end up in a mess, right? Flip the switch on it. Mm. So I was talking to Les about it and I said, but how do I do that practically? Because I'm so on the go and then I've got all these caring responsibilities that I'll have everything planned out and I'll do my list and everything, but then I'm so busy. And he gave me this piece of advice and it was always plan gaps in your day. Mm. And there's a very mm. big reason for that. Liz, you want to share that with everybody because it was, it's actually revolutionised my thing. And I, I'm an apps person because I like to, I've got an ADHD brain. So if I don't have it written down with an alarm, and, and actually, to be honest, I've got three alarms <laughs> for each thing, um, I will forget or I'll hyper-focus and, and miss out. But those gaps yeah. um, essential, especially when caring, because you've got to always have your downtime and your self-care, but mm. also... Unexpected. The yeah, something unexpected. And it is about curveballs. Yeah. Mm. Since when have we had the perfect day? Mm. It's been a while since we had a perfect day. For us that are on the go, for us that are caring for other people, why? Because it happens that you've got the, and it is the curveball. That, I didn't see that coming. Where did that come from? Mm -hmm. I didn't plan for that. That wasn't mm -hmm. in my agenda. Mm -hmm. So having gaps in your schedule mm. enables you to say, okay, so I've got that. I'm going to take a half hour before and a half hour after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or 15 minutes before, 15 minutes after. Some people are listening going, yeah, that's not going to work for me. And that's okay. Where can it work? Where can you take a morning tea break? Where can you take lunch? And there are some that have this lunch break mm -hmm. and I'm going are you doing that at your desk mm -hmm. don't do that at your desk mm -hmm. again don't do your back to back to back to back to back to back to back it doesn't work like that mm -hmm. and as Danny said you end up in overwhelm because mm -hmm. someone comes so you've got five minutes and you explode yeah. you go, I've not got five minutes don't you know how busy I am and they go yeah. no yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't didn't know you were busy yeah. just thought yeah, you yeah. were getting so yeah. that explosion can be taken off the agenda just by having gaps right. so you can um, adjust your mm. your daily tasks to go no no i can move that i've got five now i've got 10 now so good yeah, yeah. so good we're, we're trying to pack the day back to back meetings and mm. urgencies coming at you mm. just trying to think oh, how am i going to 
plan for that gap. It's <laughs> How so do you true. actually do yeah. that, though? Yep. Yeah. And it's so true it, in the you office. Just, you, you, you just want to finish a little bit earlier, maybe, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because if you start to say, hey, this meeting, this meeting need to finish in, in 40 minutes, and, and we all agree that it's got to go for 40 minutes, then you have that 20 minutes up your sleeves to, as you say, yeah. right? Yeah. You just you got to plan it for it. Yeah. Start with the end in mind. And from a mental health well-being to even seriously, and I do this too, I'll book in an appointment with myself. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, so that I've technique. got some downtime so that I can use that time to either take a breather or to, to do something that, you know, I randomly might need to catch up on or as a buffer in the day. Yeah. And so you've got the flexibility then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a great strategy and very relevant in the office environment, I think, mm. but particularly in the caring industry like aged care and mm. because you do, you have your meetings, you have, you know, appointments to see clients, but then something may happen. There might be an incident that you quickly need to follow up on. And it's important that those there's time in the day to deal with those things that just come or come about. Kids get sick and you have to go home. We have to go home. Exactly, yeah, something personal that happens. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Great. Now there was gold. Yes. Yeah, I love that. Now, if if you've got categorised, contextualised, you've got all those things. You've got it into a trusted mm. system. Mm. Doesn't matter if it's app based, paper based. Doesn't matter. Digital's great because. There, and there are those that have done digital that it doesn't work. So give mm. yourself the flexibility of going, mm. you know, office works it is, I am going to get a planner. Mm. I'm going to get a six-ring binder. I'm going to be able to take those things and put it in. Now, mine, mm. and I have mine with me, is that it's got two parts to it. You've got your calendar section at the front, which really is a day-to-day mm. to-do list as opposed to my schedule because my schedule's online. Part of the reason schedules online is because I've got a Calendly link that people can book me anywhere in the world. So it's like I just put that out and funnily enough, you cannot book me at lunch. Mm -hmm. Why? Because lunch is lunch. It's a refuel. So if I'm up at four or five in the morning and I go for, what do we got? Six six hours, seven Mm. hours. It's like uh, I Mm. need to refuel. So you cannot book me at 12 o'clock. That's my lunch. That's your yeah. time. That's my time. Or you're, you're lunch with someone else. Is it usually by yourself or doesn't matter? I always have lunch with my wife. Aww. Okay, that's nice. So we, we, I'm working from yeah. home and I'll, I'll eat with her and we'll spend that time. We'll debrief a lot of what she's been doing. Yeah. I'll debrief what she'll have questions and uh, interrupts. This is a great segue into interrupts. How many times between you two do you rush into each other and go, I've just had an idea. I've just had an idea. Yeah. I've just had an idea. And you go, I'm in the middle of something. Can, uh, <laughs> uh, now I'm, oh, okay, go ahead. That's, that's Oh, Jesus. my goodness. Oh, this yeah. is <laughs> this is us. Yeah, and Especially just, after my runs in the morning. I come back full <laughs> of ideas. I just like, got to tell you something. And like, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> and, and it is. It's like I've got this really good idea. I need to tell someone. I need and, to dump it on someone. Yeah, <laughs> I need to share it. Ah. And my wife would say to me, uh, hold on a tick, I'm interrupting you, aren't I? I went, yep. She goes, I shouldn't do that. She's like, no. Okay. <laughs> so we came to an agreement that she would write down the five or ten things that she had as agenda items and bring it to lunch. Mm. So we're sitting over lunch and it's like, okay, what do you got? Well, this and I've done this and yep. this is awesome and mm. I, we need to. And so we're going through hers and then she goes, have you got some? Because I did it to her as well. So on the back end of that, it was, oh, well, I've got some things as well. So I'm able to, with the amount of stuff that I've got going on, go, how was your morning? All I got, and I've written them down in my trusted system. I did this, I did this, I did this. Oh, tell me more about that one. Mm. So I'm able to take not only what's happening in hers, but also mm. share what's going on for me. Mm. Love that. So really you're setting boundaries, you know, like at 12 o'clock I have lunch and no one can book me in. So yep. you're putting your own boundaries and you're setting up rules, yep. family rules to make sure that it works, really. Yep, boundaries, yep. boundaries, which leads us into boundaries. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Great segue. Oh, good. <laughs> Great segue. The, the thing around boundaries is mm. a classic example of, have you got five? Hey, Danny, have you got five? And you know it's not going to be five minutes. You just know. Yeah. Never five minutes. Why do we even say that? You've got five minutes. <laughs> it's 
it's never five minutes. Because it's an I intro. Mess- it's an I intro. My, my message goes automatic. Go five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so if if you have good boundaries, you go, I understand it's important. Um, can we pick it up at one o'clock? Mm-hmm. Is that is it so urgent right now that we that we yeah, do it yeah. right now, or mm-hmm. that, can we put it off? So, is that something we can catch up at three o'clock? Mm-hmm. Now, Danny, that's really important. Can we schedule that one in for nine o'clock in the morning? Because mm-hmm. I want to spend an hour and a half on it. So, for the other side, the person that's asking the question, do you have five minutes? Mm-hmm. What is the motivator to doing that and needing to get it done? Is it to do with like do they need to think about how they can dump their their thoughts on mm-hmm. paper. Like it's two ways, it right? Is it's two the ways. person, the person needs to say no. Let's meet up at one because it's important. But there's the other side as well. The person's probably either anxious. They need to get onto it. Mm-hmm. So, is there any tips there well, it's for both? Sides? Yeah, there's boundaries both ways. The big key is awareness. Mm. Are you aware of the mm. behaviour that you're doing? Because mm. there's so many times we aren't aware of. What we do. Yep. It's like I had no idea I did that. I'm mm. so sorry. Mm. I ran into a good friend of mine last night and he's going through a really tough tough time in his life with his marriage and he went, I had no idea. I did not know until it all fell apart and someone said, you know, you do this behaviour. If someone had told me, I would have been able to do something with it sooner. Mm. So these sorts of things, the lack of boundaries, we all know that we do it in some way, some more than others, and yet it's the awareness of what is it that's working in your life so you can do more of what works? Mm. What is it that's not working? Becoming aware of that so you can do less of it and mm. discover some new things to mm. put into your life, maybe out of what we're discussing today, mm. you can put into your life to create more of those things you want. Yeah. And even to delegate, I think, as a carer, super important because sometimes we just have that pressure that we have to deal with it or we're the yep. only one can deal with it yep. and it's a big lie actually that keeps I mean there are certain things probably but that you know we feel like we have to carry all of this yeah there are four mm-hmm. I talked to this one around email and paperwork mm. and about tasks and it's the four Ds mm-hmm. so for example a lot of people get inundated with email. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, email, I hate emails. Like, yeah, you're not alone. There are a lot yeah, of people. Yeah. But since when's the last time you had zero emails in your inbox? And they go, what's that? Mm-hmm. I've never had that from the time I opened my email account. There was already one in there. Yeah. <laughs> so there's this thing called inbox zero. Yeah, yeah. And the way to get to inbox zero is the four Ds. Do, dump, delegate, and decide when. Mm-hmm. And you can use it in a number of different ways. Let's just talk about email to begin with. So if you can do it in under two minutes, just do the email. Just handle it. From there, dump it. If it's spam and if it's archivable, dump it into an archive or put it in the bin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's a do, dump, dump. What are the things mm-hmm. that dump? Spam. It's like, mm-hmm. why is it still in your inbox? Get rid of it. Get mm-hmm. it out of there. So do, dump, delegate. So it's mentioned about delegation. And I'm, I'm mm-hmm. dealing with a lot of managers at the moment, not dealing with, but working with a lot of managers in which this thing of delegation comes up. It's like, oh, I don't delegate enough, do I? No, you mm-hmm. don't. Mm-hmm. You're actually taking it on yourself, yeah. doing more. Th- it's like That's because a common mistake. I'm, I'm <laughs> the only one that can do it. Nah, Look yeah. at me. I'm really yeah. good at this. Look, I, I've got to put my hand up there. Come on. Some, no. You know, we always talk about, oh, this could be delegated, but is like from from my perspective sometimes it's just quicker if i do it myself can get it done rather than waiting for someone else to do it yeah and over time it takes you and you and you and you and you as opposed to doing it once sharing it once and letting them do it so that's that it's a false economy it is a false economy giving there's two keys with it one is have clear outcomes and clear time frames can you do this with this amount of things, uh, resources, whatever, by this time. So as you mm. as you delegate, make sure that it's very specific yeah, and has yeah, a yeah. time frame. Yeah. It's like as opposed to, can you do this? Yes, I can. Well, where yeah. is it? Well, I thought it was by Friday next week. No, Friday this week. Yeah. So a lack of clarity comes yeah. out of that where you didn't set up in the beginning. Yeah. Or can you do this? 
and they get it done, but not to the standard that you wanted. And that's not on them. That's on the person that delegates. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, it's all about communication and setting the right yep. expectations. Yeah, I'm actually on the opposite side of it. I delegate everything I can, maybe <laughs> to the extreme, and you know what? I don't regret it. Sometimes I'd rather have people do it and make mistakes, and then learn it for next time. So I know the next time it comes up, I delegate it to them. They've done it before. Yeah, they made a mistake, but they learn from it. Correct. And they they just you know, get on with it. And now you have empowered the person within your office or in your family or to, to handle that part of, you know, the job that's got to be done, you know, put, mm. setting up appointments, you know, organizing things for mom, mm. you know, why do that yourself if maybe you have a sister or someone else in the family that can do it mm. just De- as well as you do? Delegate your way out of a job mm. and you won't do yourself out of a job. You just won't. It's not what happens in the industry. You, yep. d- you won't do it that way. But you need to take some of the load off. What can you delegate? And just write a list of the tasks that you've got going on in your life mm. and go, you know, I could delegate that one to Jane. I could delegate that one to Jim. Yeah. So mm. those opportunities to offload things and therefore you get that breathing space. Those times yeah. when you can actually grab a cup of coffee with a yeah. friend or go and read a book. Yeah. What? Read a book? When's the last time I read a book? Mm. Yeah, okay, so how do we do that? What is that? So you've got do, dump, delegate, and then for that particular email that you go, it's longer than two minutes, I need to kind of give myself three calls an hour for this, diarise it, the mm-hmm. 4D being diarise, or mm-hmm. decide when, where you put it off into, let's say I can't do it now, I'll do it at 3 o'clock. Yeah. So I'm doing it at 3 o'clock, give myself three calls an hour, I made myself a appointment, good old appointment with myself mm, yep. because I know that I've got to get it done. And when it comes up, don't poo-poo it. Don't kind of go, oh, that doesn't matter. Yeah. No, I wouldn't do that to, to you. To, yeah. You wouldn't do it to me. Keep so your promises. With yourself. Yeah. yeah. It's really That's how you important. build your self-esteem, right? Yep. You build your promises of what you promised yourself to do. And as you say, scheduling. Yep. If you don't, that, that's the key part of it. Unless you put it in a diary and it's there scheduled, it, it, it might not get done. Yeah. yeah. Whereas if you schedule, you know it's there and you've got to do it and keep the promise, that's also not a great way to build your self-esteem. So, hey, yeah. you know what? I did that. I feel good about it. And I feel like I achieved something. Exactly. You can tick it off. And Danny said on. in the beginning called, I write everything down. It's in a schedule. Yeah. So yeah. having it in a schedule, it's like <laughs> the alarm goes off. I need to take some medication. The alarm goes off, I need to give the person some medication. Yep. So alarms are fabulous. Mm. We have it in our household. The the alarm will go off on the watch or on the phone. It's like, wow, I'm so glad that was set because I was so into doing this, I didn't even realise that the time had flown. Yes. That's a good, really good yeah. point, yeah. isn't it? Yep. We've spoken a lot about self-care in other podcasts and things, and it is something that's, you know, we keep on harping on about it, don't we? Yeah. But it is really important. Schedule really time for self-care in your diary. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's and then so you impo- really need to have those boundaries with yourself. Yeah. Just yep. stick to it. To go, no, it's in here for a reason. It's just as important as me keeping an appointment with the doctor or with somebody else that I'm caring for. Um, because you can't fill from an empty cup. Mm. You just can't. You can't. You, I'll say that again. Mm. You cannot fill mm. from an empty cup. Yep. You can't give out if you've got mm. nothing to give. Yep. Mm. So how can you take care of you? And I've got in my coaching program a particular uh, module specifically for self-care. Mm. So that as yeah. a business owner, the people that I'm working with have the opportunity to stop and go, what about you? What about you? What about you? What about you? Mm. Because if you're not, what's the oxygen theory? Probably mm. our, uh, your previous guest yeah, in always Justin comes up. Would, have, would have said it. Yeah, yeah, always oxygen comes up. Oxygen theory. Yeah. Because put your mask on first, mm-hmm. then help the person beside you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't and you pass out, guess what? You're not helping anybody. Yeah. So look after you first. We say it every single yeah, yeah. podcast. It's yeah. come up. Totally. In every single podcast. <clears throat> it's just... Like, it's got to be the common denominator here. Absolutely, yeah. self-care yeah. for carers. But again, it's so the industry. Important. How yeah. many people burn out in the industry yeah. because they're not looking yeah. after themselves? Yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. They think they can take more. They can take more. They can say yes to yeah. it, and then they burn out, and then, and then it's it's not good for no one. But I love looking after people. I love looking after people. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you yeah, are a yeah. person. 
look yeah. after you at the same time. Yeah. Because you can't give out the empty cup. You can't run on fumes mm. and expect that your level of care is what it used to be mm -hmm. to the person that you're caring for. Absolutely. I would love for you to share that link to your uh, self-care module. We, we can share that into the, the blog. And, and Danny also has even more resources that we can share and uh, mm -hmm. because uh, we can't underestimate that, exactly. that area. Exactly. But then to look after yourself, you need time to do that. That's that's the whole message that's here, right? That's why we're here. That's why we're here. And the lot of time here, Les Watson, that's, uh, I can't think of a better person to <laughs> discuss it, all this stuff, but uh, so good, so Giselle, good. you've got something, I'm sure of it. I do. I do have a specific question. Go so on. people that that you see, what is the one biggest time management issue that you see? Mm. Procrastination. So how do you get out of that rut then? It's it's a it's a two minute rule. Mm. Okay. It's an oldie but a goodie. It's um mm. it's a thing of if it comes up, it's mm -hmm. in your goals and in your integrity to do and you can do it within two minutes then just do it. Mm -hmm. And Mel Robbins, uh, she was mm. the, the queen of this. It's five, five four, three, two, one, yeah. and just do it. So mm. it's there. I need to ring this person. I'll put it off. And you go, no, I could do it now. Five, four, three, two, one, pick up the phone, yeah. make the call. Just do it. Just, just do it. Just do it. And Nike. Nike. <laughs> yeah. and, and it works because it's getting things done. So people ask me how I get things done because I don't procrastinate. I don't kind of put it off till mm -hmm. later, I go, how can I get that done? Even going through the house, mm -hmm. you go, I could do that later. No, do it now. Bang, it's just a quick one. Put the dish away. Put the. I've finished my cup of tea. And rather than just leave it on the desk, go and wash it up. It's only five steps, ten steps yeah. away to the ki kitchen sink from yeah. my office. And, and we, I'll, I'll do that later. I'll do that later. I'll do that later. So procrastination number one. Mm -hmm. mm. So to get over procrastination, choose to be bold. Mm. I call it leadership and discipline. Mm -hmm. Leadership and discipline. Be the leader of your life. Mm. And obviously you've got a person that you're caring for. You're being the leader of them, but the leader of yourself. It's like leader of the schedule, leader of the joint schedule, the mm. joint calendar. Mm. Someone needs to lead it. Someone needs to step up and go, no, nah, I'm getting this done. Mm -hmm. And like side story, I say to people, how much have you ever got done? I've got this amount. I say, okay, times it by 10. Get 10, much, 10 times as much done in your day, see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't do that. Well, there's your challenge, 10 times. So mm -hmm. they go 10 times as many phone calls and 10 mm -hmm. times as many tasks. And I love the like, 10, uh, 10 x rule. They come back it. and they go, oh, I'm sorry, I only got five times done. Well, it's pretty good. Still yeah. good. Let, let, me, let, me, uh, let me just check on that. Did you say you got five, you got, you're more productive by five? Yep. Well, check that one up. That's awesome. Yeah. Who cares about the 10? Look what happened. You purposed mm. to get things done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. And the other one on the back end of everything mm. we've been talking about is prioritization. Yep. So a lot of people will say to me, I have difficulty prioritizing. I really do struggle with what goes where. Mm -hmm. yeah, Prioritisation is pretty easy. It's mm -hmm. just A's and B's. A's are those things that need to be done today. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have a time frame. By 11.59, 59 tonight needs to be done. Mm. And the example I use is there's a bill that needs to be paid. No, Danny, mm -hmm. it's okay. I'll do that later. <laughs> and you'd put it off, put it off, put it off, put it off. <laughs> <laughs> and the end result is you put, well, your head on the, it off. you put your head on the pillow and you go, oh, what a great day. Oh, no, I haven't paid that bill. <laughs> and you know that if you don't pay the bill, it's going to cost you an extra 150 bucks. So why did you not do that when you knew it's like mm. that leadership and yeah. that opportunity yeah. to get things done straight up? All you need to do is go, bang, that's an A. That's an A priority. Yep. Get it done and get it done early. Yep. The earlier the better. So in doing so, you can go, tick, move on. <laughs> Let's go. And you do your A's in a schedule of A1, A2, A3. And now B's are anything that's not an A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the definition of an A? A bill. Uh, if My example is if an A doesn't get done, the brown smelly stuff is going to hit the round twirly thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
and no one wants yeah. that to hit the fan. So based on that, get it done and get it done early, the Bs, anything that's not an A that doesn't need to be done today. Yeah. And given that, if some of those Bs turn into A tomorrow, phew, that's all good, not a problem. Mm -hmm. Why? Because deal with today today, deal with tomorrow tomorrow. But so many times we get to that point and let's just for giggles say we're doing a nine to five because since when have we done a nine to five recently? Just say we get to five o'clock and go, oh, I can relax now. Oh, no, I haven't done that <laughs> yeah, yeah. thing. Yeah. And therefore you have to stay back and maybe it's an hour job, maybe it's a two-hour job. Yeah. Because you didn't do it early in the day, you let other things get over the top. Yeah. So do your A's and do them early, as early as you can. Yeah. Leadership and discipline. Leadership is making those choices. Discipline is doing it not once, not twice but continuously being disciplined in being the mm. carer of mm -hmm. self, mm -hmm. filling your own cup, taking the lunch, writing things down, making yourself important, mm. those sorts of things, being disciplined. And, it, and people go, I'm not disciplined. Yes, you are. You got mm. out of bed. You put your clothes on. You did your teeth. Mm. You're having food. That's all discipline. And yet we go, oh, key, really? Key distinction Habits, yep, they became habits. That's the exactly. trick. Do it often enough until you are hardwired in your brain yep. that then becomes habit, and then you do it automatically yeah. without thinking about it, right? Yep. So you want to inst instill healthy habits. That's another big topic, healthy, isn't it? Healthy habits, you bet. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm reading a book about that, by the way. It's a great book. <laughs> she, she's Aussie <laughs> as well. So. I love anyway, it. Yeah, but yeah, gold. I love yeah, it. Pro procrastination is such a big thing. Mm. And you find that when, when you start, just do it. When you just start small and then you find that you want to do more and more because then you, you it's like you're on a roll. Mm. Yeah. I think that, that works for me. Yeah. Planning is really important for this sort of stuff. For example, I have a thing called plan each day the day before. Say that again. Plan each day the day before. Yeah. Mm. Plan yeah. each day the day before. So yeah, the last thing good. you do prior to leaving your desk, whatever your desk is, mm -hmm. Last thing prior to leaving your desk at night is to plan tomorrow. Yep. So I've got these appointments and I've got these tasks I want to get done. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I've got a meeting with this particular person. And I know that it's not going to be nice. It's not going to be easy. Maybe it's going to be quite tumultuous. Therefore, oh, how am I going to handle it? And you give yourself the time to come up with the words as opposed to getting to tomorrow at 9 o'clock and go, what have I got on today? <gasps> I've got that thing and I have no idea what I'm going to say. Mm. So you're doing planning the day the day before by mm. setting it up, setting yourself up for success by doing it in advance. Yeah. It really works for a lot of people and some people have never, it's like, oh, I've never heard that. It's like, yep, all you need to do, last thing, prior to leaving your desk, what's coming up tomorrow? What yeah. do I need to do? How do I do this? Where do I go with this? And then mm. you actually clean slate it in your brain too before you step off to relax and yeah. go to sleep without having stuff pop up. Yep. Yeah. They say, I read a book by Brian Tracy ages ago, Eat the Frog. Eat the Frog. Oh, right? Yeah. Is that is it true? Like you want to do the hard stuff first thing so then everything else becomes easier? Correct. I don't know. Is Only it, with garlic you, and butter. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. So eat... <laughs> Eat the frog is about doing the hard things first, and that's the A and B priority. Yeah. The A priority, get it. It's like, I don't want to have this conversation, but don't put it off till three o'clock because you you hold that on like the yeah, backpack right. of yeah. rocks. Do it now, read it's that like, band aid now. Oh, this is so tough all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to, no, backpack full of rocks, do it at nine o'clock, rip the band aid off, and you go, well, that didn't go as bad as what I thought. It went a whole lot better. And I'm so free to go on and do the rest of my day. Yeah. Quick question. Yes, go on. Am I allowed to ask of a course. question? Of course. Yes. So one method I've heard of, and this is more in relation to financial budgeting, right? Yes. So you get um, a situation where you write down all your bills and then you put what you owe the least at the top and what's owed most at the bottom and you pay off the smaller debts first because you get through them quicker. Do you find that the same thing can apply, mm. depending on obviously how urgent certain tasks are, to knock 
those shorter ones off first so we actually get through your list quicker mm. and you've, you've then grabbed you some momentum good. to keep going because, you, oh, I'm on a roll, I'm yeah. so productive. Because I find sometimes that can be a really good way. To yeah. get you going. And then because the momentum's up, yeah. getting through the bigger tasks mm-hmm. and slowing down is actually easier than mm-hmm. starting with the mountain. It's like That's that another whole, way to look at it. eat an <clears> elephant <throat> one mm. bite at a time. Kind of a I had a school teacher and it's, this is not related to the topic, but I had a school teacher <laughs> who, same principle when we were talking about exams, said, look at the exam paper during reading time, pick the easiest question, do them, because then you feel good. Yeah. And then those harder ones, it will come. You know, so it's it like you warm you're up. feeling good, you're warming yeah. up. So yeah. strategy. So you've got strategy. both. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. Got, There's all, got, you always have uh... You've got to balance with it because there are some people that do – a B priority, a short B, and then find another short B and another short B priority. Yeah. And, then and they end up halfway through the day going, nah. I've just done Bs, I've not focused on any A's, and I'm no, out of time. Mm. Absolutely. So it is a, a, yeah. a bit of a balancing act that's of a good point. where do you procrastinate? Oh, mm. it's okay, I'll do a couple of Bs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you it end hap- up in the schmoo as opposed to, to what is that big thing that I need to bite off? Bite it off, chew like mad handle it, and then maybe yeah. there's a time when you can do a couple of the small B priorities in between. However, look at where those things are in procrastination. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Now, got a couple more really quick ones for you. One is set deadlines. Mm. My book, mm. Get Back an Hour and Every Day, mm. It came about because I was in a mentoring session. The woman across from me said, you know you've got enough material to write a book. And I went, no, I don't. She went, yeah, you do. And my wife goes, yes, you do. And I went, because I move in circles where if they give you a challenge, you don't back away, you actually take the challenge up. I said, mm, okay, well, uh, within 12 months I'll have a manuscript. Mm-hmm. And 12 months later I had the manuscript wow. and six months after that I had a fully-fledged book. Why? Because I set a deadline. Mm. Mm-hmm. So given that I set a deadline, one of the reasons why we have so much in our head and from our incompletions that need to be put on paper is because we didn't set a deadline. So mm. the deadline could be what do you need to do by the end of the day? Mm. What do you need to do by the end of next week? What do you need to do by the end of the month? Mm-hmm. What do you need to do by the end of the financial year? Mm-hmm. By the end of the year. So setting deadlines and then going, is that realistic? I would go to Danny and go, Danny, is that time frame realistic? She goes, yes, it is. Wonderful. So I then own it and I head towards that deadline mm. as opposed to, oh, it doesn't matter mm. yeah. because mm. you're back into the same mm. quagmire of incompletions again. Mm. So setting deadlines is one way of going, no, no, no. <laughs> Classic example, ever gone on holidays and got stuff done? Yes. Why? Because there's a hard stop on that date. I'm leaving work behind (laughs) and I'm going on holidays. So I need to get stuff done. And we all do it. Yeah. We all do it. Therefore, that. Plan more holidays. (laughs) Exactly. Get more done. (laughs) And there are people that go, no, no, I'm doing a week every, every quarter. Rather than all at the end of the year, they'll do. Yep. I'll do a week, so they'll come up to it and go, "What can I get done so I can yep. do a week without having to?" Mm-hmm. So that's that one, and I've got one more for you, and that is, get enough sleep. Yes. <laughs> get enough sleep again. It's in the self care, <laughs> but yeah. I have a question for all of us, and that is, what do you think the main thing apart from kids? <laughs> apart from kids, what's the main thing that would stop you from going to bed at night? This thing. Very good. Tick. <laughs> Gold star chocolates for you. <laughs> I don't even keep mine in my bedroom anymore. Look at that. Yeah, wow. She's good. Oh, She's so good. So it used to be the idiot box in the corner, what we used to call the television. Yeah. It went from the corner onto the wall. Yeah. Then for some people it went into the bedroom. Yes. So it's like I'll just watch telly in bed. Yeah. No. And then it became an iPad or a, a tablet. Yeah. And then without that it became the phone. Mm. Yeah. So part of that is like I'll just flick through TikTok for a while, Instagram, LinkedIn. And you get sucked in. Two hours later. Like this infinite scrolling is, yeah. a, is a killer, isn't it? And it's 11 o'clock. Where did that time go? It just keeps so Keep scrolling and scrolling until so one more, one more, and you yep. end up there for hours. 
again, set a timer and go, I'm going to give myself half an hour. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. But in that half an hour, you go, woohoo. Mm. Half an hour later, there's your alarm. Close it. Put it aside. As Danny said, don't even take the phone into the bedroom. That's mm. another way of doing it. Mm. But sleep is really important. Yeah, the, yeah. What's sleep for you? Is it seven hours, six hours, five, eight? Work out what it is for you mm. so that you go, that's what I need to, and mm. work towards getting it. Yep. As opposed to, oh, I never get enough sleep. <clears throat> mm. Because of what? What's the excuse? You, you need to plan it, right? You yep. need to purposefully... Mm. And they say the hours, the hours before midnight are the most important. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Yeah. So because plan plan sleep. to get some good sleep yep. because you as a carer, you've got to be on your game mm. and, and going without less than a full cup, it's not going to work. It's yep. just not going to work. So, so the more you can do as far as sleep and self-care in that regard, yep. the better it is. It's wonderful. It's so good. Yeah. So good. So. Fantastic. Lots to consider. Lots to consider. So if, how about want, I just do a quick wrap-up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to ask you that. Let's do that. Great idea. Yeah. So if you get things out of your head down onto paper, that's a data yeah. dump. All the incompletions. Then categorise and contextualise. What's the context? What's the categorise? And what's the category you put in? And what's the context? From there, where do they live? Make sure it lives in a trusted system. Mm-hmm. Prioritise the things you do on a daily basis. And have boundaries around the stuff that you do. Leadership and discipline. Mm. So be the leader and have the leadership and the discipline to do the things you say you're going to do. Plan each day the day before. Don't trust your memory. Write things down. Set your deadlines and get enough sleep. That is wonderful. What a masterpiece. So much value out of this. I, I can't wait to rewatch it and uh, and take notes. And so good. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. A lot of good tips there to help our listeners. Yeah. Get through their days. Indeed. And make lots of improvements. Yes. Here we go. We've heard it all from the time lighting. And there is a bonus. <laughs> One of the things that I will give, and it'll be in the show notes or the newsletter, is twenty-five time tips. For busy people. And carers are busy people. Mm-hmm. We all know that carers are busy people. Yeah. So go to the link. It's getmoretime.com.au forward slash time tips. It's really easy. Just time tips at the end of my website, getmoretime.com.au forward slash time tips and download it. And you can download the 25 time tips. It will help you. It's a lot of the tips we've covered today. Awesome. That's a whole stack more. Amazing. I would definitely put in the link for sure. Yep. Awesome. Fantastic. Well. Wonderful. It's a wrap. That brings us to the end of another episode of Conversations with G&G. And to all the caregivers out there, whether you're taking care of a loved one or a friend or a patient, just know that your efforts don't go unnoticed. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other.